Hey guys, how's it going? Tool Cruise here and welcome to another cycling video here in Japan. So I recently got some new tires on my bike. You can see behind me, I got some new solid airless tires. It's my first time ever using anything like this. And I just made a video on my channel about the installation, my first impressions on the tires. And from that video, I got a lot of other questions like what's the rolling resistance? How do they feel on different surfaces? How do they roll in the wet? and how heavy are they and all sorts of stuff. So in today's video, I wanted to make a follow-up video, talk about those things while we ride. Anyway, first let me show you guys my setup. So this is my bike right here. This is a Planet X cyclocross bike, but you can see I've got it set up like a road style. So I've got some road tires on here. The tires that I'm using are from Tannis. They're normal 700 size wheels with a 25 width. So basic standard road size here. I'm using a disc setup and I'm normally not one to go for colored tires. This is my first time using colored tires, but you can see it just matches the bike really well. Uh, this bike's name is Suikachan, by the way. And anyway, we're gonna be talking about these things while we're riding. It's a beautiful day in Japan today. You can see we're cycling along the river path. There's a whole bunch of sakura cherry blossoms in full bloom right now. So we've got a beautiful setting to talk for today's video. We're also joined with my wife, Tuan-chan, and we're gonna enjoy some nice cycling together. She's on her road bike. Anyway, let's start today's ride. Let's go. Let's go. So here we are starting our ride. That blue sign there means that this is a shared path. So both bikes and walkers can be on this path. There's a lot of, there's actually quite a few bikes today. We're here in the morning on a weekday. There shouldn't be too many people out, but we'll see what we see. Anyway, let's start talking about these tires. So. Uh, one of the first questions that I got was, how is the rolling resistance? Does it feel any slower than a normal tire? Does it feel a little bit harsher? And after riding on these tires for a couple weeks, I gotta say, my answer kind of varies. I find that if I'm riding on a smooth surface, I don't really notice the differences as much, but if I'm riding on a pretty rough surface, like you can see, we're riding on a pretty rough surface right now. This road is pretty messed up from all the trees, the roots and stuff. So on this kind of surface, I definitely feel the rolling is a bit more rough so we're actually going to move over to the main side of the road right now and on these more normal roads when the road is nice and smooth they roll really nice and smooth and i honestly still can't tell the difference between these and a normal high pressure road tire so me being a former road racer myself i normally would ride my tires at 120 psi so uh, the tires that i've got are set as 110 PSI. So it's pretty similar to my normal setup and on a nice smooth road, it just rolls pretty nicely. I've ridden by myself at slow speeds, at fast speeds, uh, on flats, up mountains, down mountains. And I honestly don't notice that much of a difference in terms of rolling resistance. Um, you got to keep in mind though, my senses may be a little bit more dulled. So I'm used to riding everything, mountain bike, cyclocross road. And so I'm used to maybe a little bit more rough ride. And so Maybe if you're a little bit more sensitive to those things or you're used to riding uh, just road, you might notice those things. But personally, I don't really notice anything. Um, but definitely when you are on rough surfaces like this, it is gonna be a little bit of a harsh ride. But to be fair, if you're riding a road bike, a road tire at 120 PSI, 110 PSI on those kinds of roads, I, I feel like you're gonna get the same kind of feeling. So one disadvantage I found with these tires, you can't really change the tire pressure to be anything else. So if you like going down to like 80 PSI or something, or even getting like wider tires and getting lower than that, you're not gonna be able to get down to that level, which would bring you more comfort. So that is one disadvantage to keep in mind with these tires is that it's not gonna be nearly as comfortable as a low pressure air solution. But to me, I don't mind the harsher, oh, we got a cat over there. But to me, I personally don't really mind the harsher ride knowing that I've completely eliminated the risk of getting a flat. That's the whole reason I got these tires in the first place was because I was sick of getting flats. And I know I've gotten a whole bunch of comments on this channel talking about the perfect solution for never getting flats, things that I should do. But um, even if you do all those things, you don't completely eliminate the risk of getting a flat that still exists, even though it's definitely smaller than it would be with other things. You could get great tires like on her bike, she's got some Gator skins, which are some of the best puncture proof tires that I've ever used. I've also used the Marathon tires and both of those tires, I've honestly never gotten a flat on. The flats I got this last year were when I was experimenting with uh, new tires. So uh, don't try something new if you've got something that's already working, but um, I am trying something new and I've been pretty happy with the tires so far. Lots of people crossing right now. 
Oh, the car's gonna let him go. Thank you. And actually, they're supposed to let you go when they have these crosswalks. They're supposed to give right away to pedestrians. Uh, not many cars do though. The other question I got with these tires was with the weight. And there's a whole bunch of different size options. So I can't just say like the weight for all of these different tires. There's uh, different widths, different sizes, small wheels, larger wheels. But in general, these tires are gonna be a bit heavier than a normal tire in tube solution. So there's no getting around that. No matter what size you go for, they are gonna be a bit heavier. And so with them being a bit heavier, that's more work that you're gonna have to put out on your commute. But if you're like me, you're not crushing it on your commute every day. I'm normally spinning at a pretty nice casual pace. I don't wanna to arrive to work all sweaty. So I find that even with the extra weight, it doesn't really tire me out that much more than I would be riding if I was on a lighter wheel setup. But again, like I mentioned before, I'm used to riding everything. I'm used to riding heavy equipment. So that kind of stuff doesn't really bother me. And again, I'd rather have heavier equipment knowing that it's gonna be completely bond proof than have the lightest thing and save a little bit more energy. But in my last video, some people were quick to point out that the overall weight, when you consider everything, would actually go down. And that's because you no longer have to carry a spare tube. You no longer have to carry a pump. You no longer have to carry like tire levers and all those extra accessories. And when you consider the weight of all of those items, that easily makes up for the extra weight of these tires. So your overall weight is actually going to be going down, which is pretty interesting to think about. The next thing I want to talk about is the cornering and grip on the tires. So like I mentioned earlier, I've ridden these things on a whole bunch of different variety of surfaces so far. I've ridden on regular dry surfaces. I've ridden on rough surfaces, smooth surfaces, and wet surfaces, as well as up some mountain climbs. There were a lot of questions in the last video asking about how these handle in the wet, how is the grip of these? And I took this really slow at first because I wasn't sure how well these were gonna grip in different situations. And as I've been riding with them over the last few weeks, I've gotten a lot more comfortable and have a lot more faith in these tires now. I'm still working my way up to 100% confidence with these things and gradually getting my way there. But honestly, I haven't really had any problems. There have been moments when things got a little bit slippery. It really depends on the surface that you're riding on. Some wet surfaces are more slippery than others, but on general main regular roads like this when they're wet, I don't feel that it's that much more slippery. I was actually climbing up a wet mountain road the other day with my friend who's on a normal road bike and he was slipping more than I was and he was on normal road tires and I'm on these. So I don't think it really is always about the tire, about how slippery things are. Like, yeah, some tires are more slippery than others, but I think a lot of it comes down to your riding style and your riding control. So me, I'm also really big into cyclocross and mountain biking. So I know how to handle my bike. And this is something that you can build a sense for knowing when to put power out, knowing how much power to put out. If you put out too much power when you're spinning your pedals at a certain point, you're gonna slip. And if you know how to control that, you're really gonna reduce those problems. So again, for me, I don't really notice that much of a difference if these are more slippery than other tires, but if you know how to control those things, you can really mitigate that. Here we are starting a climb. So you will notice with the extra weight on the wheels that things like climbing, for example, might be a little bit more rough because there is the extra weight and weight becomes more significant when you're going uphill. But I just look at it like it's extra training. I don't mind the extra weight. And it also depends on what you're planning to use these tires for. So for me, I was planning to use these tires for commuting purposes, for getting to work. Whew, I'm out of breath, I'm out of shape. <laughs> I also considered using these tires as my touring tires and I might be doing a couple touring rides with them here in Japan, but when they work, they work great. But the problem is, for example, if you break a spoke or something, one of the disadvantages of these tires is they're generally bomb proof, but if there's a malfunction with the wheel, if a spoke breaks or something like that, it's gonna be a lot more work to get that fixed. And if you're out touring somewhere, you might not have the tools or resources that you need to fix the bike. So there is a little bit of risk with that. Man, I need to start riding some hills more often. My wife is dropping me on this climb. One other question I wanted to talk about in this video was the price point. This may change depending on where you live, but on average, these tires average about $80 per tire. So about $160 for the setup, which is a pretty pricey investment. But let's compare that to the cost of regular tires. So for example, my other regular go-to tires are either Gator Skins or Marathons. Those are gonna cost about $50 a pair. So $100 for both of those, plus 
Two tubes, $110, $115. So you're looking at a difference of about $50, which can be pricey for people who are on a budget. But for me, I think about it this way. Like imagine if you had a flat on your ride into work in the morning and you had a chance to get to work on time and not risk being late. Like in that situation, how much money would you pay? In those kinds of situations, you get a bit more desperate and feel like you'd be willing to spend a bit more money. So for me, the extra 50 bucks is totally worth completely eliminating the risk of flatting on the way to work and just not having to deal with that inconvenience. $50, the extra money is well worth it in my mind. But anyway, we've arrived here at Hewa Park. I don't think I filmed really any videos here on the channel lately, but this is actually one of my main or one of the popular training areas here in the Nagoya region. It's a small little circuit, a few kilometer course. It loops around this graveyard area. There's a little bit of a hill and there's also a flat section. So I used to run a sprint workout here. Uh, every Wednesday night, we'd get a group together and do some sprints here. I could never make any videos because it's always too dark when I get here, but you can see it is packed with some sakura cherry blossoms right now. Really beautiful. And it is a graveyard, so you gotta be a bit respectful with that. But um, strangely enough, a lot of people use this as an exercise area. There's a walking course. A lot of runners train here. A lot of cyclists train here. We're gonna do a couple laps here and get a workout in and then get something nice to eat. But we're gonna finish this video here, maybe continue and film another video. So if you're interested, you're new to the channel, you wanna see more videos about cycling, life in Japan, be sure to subscribe. And Toonchan's also gonna be filming some walking videos here. She runs a separate walking channel so you can get some nice immersion experience in Japan without hearing a my annoying voice and you can see some beautiful sights. So go check out her channel. And as always, thanks for watching guys. And we hope this answered some of you guys' questions you had maybe about the airless solid tire setup. If you have any other questions, leave them down below in the comments and I'll get through them when I can. Anyway, thanks for watching guys and we'll see you next time here on Tubal Cruise. Johnny.